All right, let's talk a little bit about blueprints and adding interactive events to our scenes. Uh, I know that for a lot of people for architectural visualization would like to do this. Things like opening doors, turning on lights, etc. And blueprints can be a little bit daunting, especially if you've never done any coding before, because really blueprints is just coding, but it's using visual code blocks, basically, instead of uh, normal typing syntax. Um, so if you haven't done that, if you have done that, it should feel pretty natural to you after a while, after you get used to it. I have done some coding, but blueprints is still confusing to me at times. But if you haven't done any, maybe it's easier for you than picking up the syntax of a specific coding language. But anyway, with all that said, let's, uh, I'll try to keep it as simple as possible, and we'll get in there and do some, some basic stuff that you might want to do for your projects. So the first thing that you need to do is understand the difference between the types of blueprints. So we'll talk here about level blueprint versus class blueprints. Okay, so the level blueprint is accessed here. If you go to blueprints, drop down, open level blueprint. Okay, and you can see we've done this already. We're on the escape button released, we execute a console command, which is exit, and that's how we exit out of our game. Okay, the level blueprint is where you would do things that apply to the whole level, basically. And there's a few specific things about level blueprint which make it nice. Specifically, you can reference an object in your scene, like say this chair, then go into open level blueprint, and when you right click, you can see specific things for that chair. So this is a good way to grab a reference to a specific object. So you can create a reference to a bubble, uh, to the name of that chair, okay? Puts a little node there that represents that chair, and then from there you can plug that into things. You can also right click and add an event for that specific chair. On actor begin overlap, okay, there's an event. These red events are trigger events, basically, so to get anything to happen in your scene, you need an event first. So like for example, this event is when the player hits escape. This event is when something in the scene overlaps that chair. So if this happens, do something else by using this execute. Okay. If the escape button is pressed, do this. Okay, that's how that works basically. So the overlap, the overlap's a good example because that's something we'll use a lot, but just know that the level blueprints, if you select an item, you can then come in here and grab a reference to it and do things with it. So we'll go back to that, but that's just a basic explanation of what the level blueprint is, and that you would use for things in your scene that kind of apply to your whole level. Now there's blueprints that apply to specific objects as well, and there are these class blueprints. With any static mesh or any object in your scene, let's take like this spotlight for example. If you hit this blueprint add script, I'll actually turn that into a blueprint. It brings this up and you tell it the blueprint name, create blueprint for that light. Okay, now this viewport tab is showing what's in the viewport for that specific light. And right now all it is is a spotlight. We can make a script for every time that light is built. So basically when the level starts, you can say, take this light and set visibility, spotlight component. Now you'll notice that's called a component now. So the component is just a, or the spotlight is now just a component of the blueprint. Okay, so the blueprint is the parent or the main actor and the spotlight becomes a component of it. There's also an arrow, com arrow component in there. I don't actually know. I guess that's automatically in there with that spotlight because I didn't put it in. Okay, so set visibility of the spotlight component. And you can see that's grabbing a reference to the spotlight component, which is the only component in our blueprint right now. And we can say new, new visibility, which is a Boolean. Boolean is a yes or no, so you click it and that will make it, I believe if it's on, it will turn it off. If it's off, it will turn it on. Okay, so when this light is constructed, this little script will run. We don't actually want it, so let's delete it. And then in the event graph, we can take different events and make things happen. So these events here you see are very important. 
remember I said an event needs to happen before any script runs. So he, here these events are event begin play, which is when your level starts, do this. Event tick is on every tick of the game, so every frame of the game basically. Do this. So if you want something to be happening continually, you use the event tick. And you can say, just as an example, we can say print string. A string is a type of data in coding that contains letters or a string of letters. Okay, so we're printing a string, hello. Now you'll notice there's this little node next to print string or in string. You could make you could make any kind of text be plugged into there. So say you had so there's these nodes like to string for integer. Okay, so if you had a number that was that you wanted to get in your scene, you could do this to string integer. Or you could type in here uh, twenty. And you could run that into your string. Okay, or you could run something else into here, some number that you're grabbing from somewhere else. Like if you're making a game, your health could be a number. You could plug it into here, and that 20 would go away. And then it would just automatically convert it into a string and put it onto your screen. Let's take that out for now, and we can just type in here, hello. Okay, now when we run the game, we should say hello on the screen. Yep, every frame is saying hello, 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 hello. Okay. And that will just continue to happen for the whole game because we haven't put in any scripting to tell it to stop. Now, why do we use these class blueprints, these basically like object blueprints? Well, with this light, if it's going to be really similar to a bunch of these other lights and we want to be able to control them somehow, then blueprints is a good way to do it. It's kind of, it's kind of like instancing in 3D. Uh, if you create a blueprint of this and then copy it around, you now have a light that is controlled by the blueprint basically so all these lights all the ones that are part of that blueprint would be controlled by the same scripting the script the same blueprint so you can edit them all at the same time there's other things you can do with them which are cool well you can add any scripting to them which is useful for wanting to control them in any way you can also do so that can light here let me show you like this these little disks that we made are representative of a self-illuminated puck, basically, that represents the light. So instead of using this can light here, we could convert this into a blueprint just by clicking here. Say, uh, can light blueprint. Okay. Now, you can see that there's a static mesh component here, and that's our little light, and that's all that's here. But we could do this, add a component to it. And now you can add any kind of object in UE4, basically, to this blueprint. So let's add a spotlight to it. Now you can see our blueprint consists of the puck light plus the spotlight. If we move that into place, and think of these as hierarchies. So the spotlight you can see is childed under this static mesh component. So if you move one, the other moves along with it. Okay, now you take that spotlight, you can adjust that to whatever you want, and now compile and save. Now, now we have a little const constructed object that contains both the puck light and the spotlight. Now we can copy that around, and all of it can, can be controlled at one time. So if we take that can light, copy it to here, and then we go into Edit Blueprint, and you'll see if we go into the viewport, it'll show us that light. Okay, and obviously we want to change that cone. Something like that. And the inner cone angle can be something like that. Sure, that's fine. Now you will see that both of those have been edited. There's that one, and there's that one. Okay, so those blueprints. And now we can also attach a script to these lights and make them do whatever we want. So we'll see an example of that in the next video.